It seems like everybody these days has a really great idea for a mobile application. The problem is that everybody that comes and talks to me about their idea, it always seems like they never end up making their app. So this made me wonder, what's preventing these really passionate people from making these really innovative ideas? The situation kind of reminded me of a quote by Mark Zuckerberg in the Social Network movie, when he said, if you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. And what I think he meant by that was the people who deserve the credit are the ones who do the work. But why is it that everybody seems to have a million dollar app idea? I think it can go back to people like Joel Kamm, who created an app called iFart. Literally, it's just an app on your iPhone or iPad where you click a button and it makes a fart sound. Now this reached number one in iTunes and sold over 800,000 copies for a dollar. And that's not quite a million dollars, but it's pretty darn close. Another really great example of this goes all the way back to the year 2007, when Armin Heinrich cre created an app called I Am Rich. And what you're looking at is exactly what that app is. It's just a picture of a jewel. That's it, just a picture. So you can show it to your friend and say, I am rich. <laughs> because this app cost $999. And he sold eight copies of this app over two weeks before Apple finally took it down. <laughs> because two people said they accidentally clicked on it and purchased it, and so they got refunds. But what I find interesting is six people didn't ask for their money back. <laughs> but this isn't the story of other people's apps. Instead, I wanted to share with you the story of making my first app, because like everyone else, I have a good idea for an app, but I just wanted to see if I could actually make it. And what you're looking at is a picture of my app called Weight Stacker. It's a simple calculator that tells you what weights to put on the bar at the gym when you're doing exercises. It's a simple idea, but I find it kind of useful. So when I started out, this is how I thought it would work. I'm gonna come up with this idea, somebody's gonna make this app, things are gonna happen, sons. and then success, I'm gonna have an app, right? That's how it works. It turns out this is kind of how it really works. It takes several people to make an app. You got me, I'm here, the visionary with my great idea, but I quickly realized I need a developer, a marketer, and a designer to help me make this a reality. So I started looking online and getting quotes for what this would cost, and it turns out it would take somewhere between $2,500 and $9,000 to make the simplest app I could think of. But I didn't have $9,000, so I realized I'm gonna have to be all four people in this equation. So I had to come up with an idea. And I looked out across the spectrum of apps available, and I realized it's heavily concentrated on two ends of this spectrum. On one side, we have really innovative app ideas, things like Skype and Netflix and Google Maps, things that just literally change the way we think of what a telephone is. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've got all these novelty apps, things like flashlight apps. We've probably all got one, right? And there's actually over 2,000 different flashlight apps on the iTunes store, and they don't even allow you to make them anymore. And then there's people like Joel Kamm. You know how I talked about him making the iFart app? He now says that there's over 200 imitation fart apps on the iTunes store. But I realized somewhere in the middle of this spectrum, there's a spot for people who have good ideas, can make useful apps, but with only like one designer that doesn't need a whole team like Skype and Netflix. And that's where I was hoping that my app, Weight Stacker, would fit. And I truly believe that if other people who have apps like me make their ideas, we can lift up the center of this spectrum and make these mobile devices more useful for all of us. Now that I had my idea, I had to put it on a platform. And there's three major platforms out there. There's Windows, Android, and Apple. And each one of these platforms charges a fee to become a developer for it. It's pretty small. And they also take a revenue cut from your sales. But the challenging part is that each one of these platforms requires you to know a completely different programming language, which makes the switching costs really high. So I was gonna have to pick the right one, but how do you choose? I use what I call the stereotype method. 
And I, as I started researching each of the platforms, I realized they all have very different personalities. And Windows is kind of like the Wild West. Nobody's really there yet. <laughs> then we have Android. This is the platform that everybody's on. And I realized this is a way you can actually market your app to the most people available, especially for people who are making a free app like mine. And then you have Apple. This is what I call the fat cats. These are people who spend a lot of money on their mobile devices, and maybe they'll have a few extra dollars to spend on some mobile apps as well. So if you're making a paid app, that might be the right platform for you. But for Waitstacker, I initially wrote it for Android, because I wanted to reach as many people as possible. But later, I also made it for Apple. So here I am. I've got the idea. I figured out the platform. And I realized I'm standing at the edge of a knowledge valley. I'm on one side, and my completed app is all the way on the other. And so what you're seeing here, this alphabet soup of a slide, are all the different technologies and programming languages and things I had to learn to just make an app. And so what did I do? I got to work. And I gave myself about one month of time to develop this app. And a majority of that month, I actually just spent figuring out what I was supposed to do. And then a very small amount of the time was actually making the code. And somebody, one of my friends came up to me and said, what does it mean to write this code? What does that look like? So I've included here a screenshot of my computer while I was writing code for the iPhone version of my app. And you can see it looks very much like a word processor. We're in the middle of the screen is where you would type your document, but instead we're actually going to be typing instructions to tell my phone what to do. And some of those instructions might say things like, make the background blue. Or if you press this button, do this. So we're going to write out all the instructions, and then I'm going to press a button that looks like a play button. And on my screen will pop up this simulator of an iPhone, and it'll show me my app. And I can play with it and see how it works. And it's actually kind of neat. So I made the app. And guess what? I put it out on the app stores, and nobody downloaded it. Nobody. But this shouldn't have come as a surprise to me, because I have a background in marketing, and I realize that there's over 1 million apps across all of the platforms now. And every day, 2,000 new apps are being added. So how do you cut through all of that to find the people that want to download my app? Well, you have to cross what I'm calling the marketing mountain. And on the left-hand side of this slide is traditional marketing terms. But the right-hand side is internet marketing terms. These are things that I would have to learn to cross the mountain. Things like A-B testing and long-tail keywords and growth hacking. So I had to learn about these things so I could climb over to the other side to find these people that would want my app. And that's what I did. And along the way, I realized that the internet is an incredible collaborator. There's tons of individuals out there and communities that are willing to help you make an app if you're willing to put in the work. In this slide, it shows several of the different communities that I use to help develop, market, and design my app. How did I do? Well, over the three months that my app was available on the stores, I've had over 1,000 downloads across both Android and iPhone. And I consider this to be a success, but not because of the number of downloads that I got, but because of the number of complaints I continue to receive about my app. People email me every day telling me, Eric, can you fix this bug? Or Eric, if you just added this one feature, it would be perfect for me. And that's how I realized that I've made something useful. And if I gave you a piece of advice, if you're thinking about making your own app, start really small and just put it out there and let people tell you how to make it better. But I started this presentation by asking, why is it that people aren't making their ideas? Well, it turns out it's just really hard. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of knowledge to learn how to make an app. But I think Thomas Edison said it best when he says, what it boils down to is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If you want to be innovative, you're going to have to do the lifting. So I want to leave you with this final thought. The next time you think about telling somebody your innovative app idea, instead, just show them your app. Thank you. Thank you.